talk about uh, some of the things the Arvada Police Department has been doing uh, during this very difficult time that we're all facing uh, with uh, COVID-19 and the, you know, the desire to try to limit and uh, eradicate this uh, pandemic, which is going to be difficult, uh, has required sacrifices by so many people. But on the other hand, so many people have stepped up uh, to help their community, to help their neighbors, to help their friends. And the Arvada Police Department has been front and center both as being on the front lines of dealing uh, with people facing this virus, but also in helping the community. So uh, Dave Snelling, thank you for joining us on our Local Heroes. And you know, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about, because I saw this article that just really was heartwarming in uh, you're helping to celebrate Susie Montoya's 102nd birthday or something like that. Can you tell us about <laughs> Absolutely. Her, I think it was Susie's niece called stating that she wanted a pie to be delivered and couldn't find anybody in the metro to deliver it. So she called, you know, one of our, our city manager office folks upstairs, Michelle Broski. And Michelle's not in the office like most of our employees. And she called the police department and it funneled its way back down to me as the public information person. And I'm like, oh, I've totally got this one. And we went to a local bakery, Rylander's Bakery. It's fantastic. We have a lot of good bakeries, but fantastic. Yes. They made not one, not two, but three cherry pies for us. We <laughs> called our colleagues at the fire department and said, can you please meet us at this day, at this time, at this address? I checked Susie lives with her two daughters who are just fantastic. I checked to make sure it was okay. We took precautions to make sure we weren't transporting any, you know, any items that may carry a uh, potential disease of COVID. So we cleaned everything up and we delivered and the neighbors came out, the fire department was there. The fire department brought balloons and I mean, Susie was in her bedroom window and she said, um, I'm really not that old in, re in regards to turning a 102. Oh, wow. <laughs> so something that we could not let pass without taking the opportunity. And it's those little things as police officers, everybody in this department that goes out every day, it's all unknown right now. Every day is a different unknown, a different setting. And to do something like that was just obviously, that was, that was no, no mental stress there. That was easy to do. So you talked about the cherry pies and you talked about the balloons. What kind of uh, uh, singing, what kind of a chorus was there to happy birthday? I assume you all sang to her. It was incredibly, yeah, it was large and everybody saying happy birthday. And uh, directly after that, we were able to have uh, the Arvada City Council, city manager's office, from the mayor on down, uh, Mark Williams. They declared that day official Susie Montoya Day in the city of Arvada. She received a copy of the proclamation um, because nobody should nobody turning 102 even in this this uh pandemic should should celebrate that birthday alone so as safe as possible we gave susie montoya i hope a really great birthday well it sounds like you did did you serenade to her from she was up in the second story window or how did that work yeah her her daughter set her up she it was in her own bedroom and could see and was waving and i think at one point she may have been blowing kisses but just absolutely fantastic to make everybody feel good to do something about it and, and you know with all the negative news rolling around and changes every day that make people feel uh, feel uncomfortable so it was nice to do something real so I know you you know this was one thing tell us about some of the other things over the last couple of weeks uh, that you've been engaged in or the department uh, again you know this this uh, moment requires local heroes, and you guys do this every day. You don't consider yourself heroes doing this, but we do. Many people do. And um, so what other kinds of things on a positive side? Because this is, you know, this does create a lot of anxiety, a lot of, um, you know, concern on the part of so many people. Uh, what other things are you doing to try to help uh, our community? You know, I got to tell you, one of the neatest things that we have, and there's a lot of them in Arvada, 
but we have the Arvada Fire Protection District and we have teamed with them and we work with our fire department more closely than any other, I think any other agency I, I can really recognize and, and that's not, not, you know, discouraging other departments, but it's, or disparaging, but with our fire department, we have a fantastic relationship. And when we started getting all this information, so we, we put it all together and we work so close with them now that it's like every scene, if we have a question, they show up with protective gear, they're able to go in, we've got plans and protocols in place. Every single officer, and I gotta say, most of the officers in our patrol unit are, are younger. Uh, most, most officers are younger than I am these days, but most of them in patrol are very young. Uh, they've started in the past five years or, sh or shorter, and this is really a change for them, but I cannot tell you how proud I am that they've, you know, and I know the chief is very proud that they've all stepped up and they're all available and they're doing different things and different calls and helping everybody. But I think the most, and not shocking, but the most impressive thing is how our community has stepped up here in Arvada. Again, they've delivered masks, handmade masks, on a daily basis, we get them delivered. People have been delivering, you know, two or three of the N95 masks that they have in their home shops or something like that, and they drop those off for us, knowing that it's, it's critical. It's, you know, it's, it's almost like gold at this point. When we're going into a call and we're not sure what the exposure is, we have those N95 masks, and these officers feel safe uh, at, at the best of their abilities to do their job. So, the community's really stepped up. Our Chamber of Commerce has developed Chow for Champions. They've developed all these other things. The Chow for Champions, citizens that want to do something. And you know as well as I do that when there's something, you know, going on and, you know, everybody now is stuck at home, they just want to do something. They just want to do their part. And wow, they really have. They've stepped up. They've donated to this organization. They go out, they buy from local restaurants, and they feed people. They feed you know, the first responders, they feed uh, hospitals, nurses, city manager, you know, city staff that's here. They, the street, you know, the streets still need to be fixed. Plows need to go out and do their job. They get put water treatment. A lot of people take that for granted. Our water treatment facility is manned all the time and they have to make sure that that does not stop in this case. Yeah. So, wow, a myriad of things, but what a tight knit community. And then one of the most impressive things I've seen is how several components or, or businesses um, or um, sectors of the city have stepped up and provided almost $2.5 million in small business loans for the city. That's, I mean, from urban renewal to the economic development to the to city council approving funds, that over 250 businesses have received those loans over the past two weeks. Just incredible. Well, you know, we live in a great place, obviously, and uh, and the people, you know, it's a it's a time where you you gotta keep distance from others, but that doesn't mean you can't help others, and that's the kind of community that we have, and uh, you know, the the willingness to to get through this together uh, is is what's going to get us through this together. So. I know you've got some uh, things you want to say to to the officers uh, of your department and to the other um, first responders and firefighters and EMTs. So uh, I'd love for you to share that now. Oh, abs absolutely. You know, I've been a police officer for almost 30 years and never have seen, I've seen nothing like this before, obviously. This is a historical thing happening in our country with a pandemic and to see how especially newer officers in our department and our whole department has stepped up they've taken over different jobs they go out they do the job regardless of whether or not they're going to be exposed and they may get sick and they understand that the big concern is they don't want to take it home to their families and they've really stepped up and have protected themselves and their families in this case as well as, you know, most departments are protecting their officers. They're getting the equipment. They're showing how to do the decontamination things. They're providing all of that material. And again, the fire departments, the different agencies working together, the sheriff's office working with the municipal police departments, uh, the police departments working with the fire departments, government agencies working together. 
um, at, the, at this level uh, from the county and the city. I mean, I just can't, it just, it really makes me proud to wear a uniform these days. I mean, it really yeah, does. Man. Yeah, I just come into work and yeah, I'm the public information guy, but if I can get somebody that will deliver masks for us, I go pick them up and do my part and try to support our guys. And they're doing great. I cannot, I cannot tell you how impressed I am and how amazing they are. And by following all of our protocols, we've really had a minimal impact here. And it's tough going out every day. And especially for our, our, our fellow first responders, they're responding to some folks that, you know, have succumbed to the disease and all of these other things, but we're supportive of each other. So it's really kind of buckling down and the first responders are absolutely su supporting first responders. Well, I, you know, when you talked about how proud you are of the team that you work with and all of these folks, uh, your, your department, the firefighters, the EMTs, of uh, first responders generally, but the folks working at uh, the water utility and, and in management. I mean, everybody has really stepped up. And uh, I can't tell you how proud I am, you know, to live in this area, to be a Coloradan, because uh, uh, I think folks uh, really um, care about their neighbors and care about their communities. And you guys uh, really uh, demonstrate that. You are great role models. And I'm glad to hear about, you know, the young officers really taking this, uh, you know, to heart, uh, to uh, look after their community, but also <laughs> be smart and look after their own families as well. And each, each of them sort of uh, watching out for each other. So, uh, so Dave, I, uh, uh, I'm really glad that you and uh, all of uh, the Arvada Police Department and the other first uh, responders are local heroes for all of us. And to have you on our little show uh, is, is great. And I wish you uh, the best. I wish the department the best. And, and uh, please uh, stay healthy, uh, stay safe, and I'll, I'll let you have the last word. Well, and the same to you, sir. And, and we understand that, you know, the whole country needs to keep running and we'll take care of our small part here and, and continue to do the best. And we don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. And I just have to say, I am incredibly proud of this community. It is one of the most amazing in the state. So well, thank you, sir. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. So uh, please, uh, all the best. And we'll talk again. I hope so. Thank you, sir. All right. Later. See ya.